www.mcdesigns.com, located at 2211 Mac Boulevard in Allentown, or call or text 347-615-3771. You are watching BRC 13. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Penn's Peak in Jim Thorpe for this election 2019 special event, the debate for the Carbon County Commissioner's race. I'm Kim Bell, General Manager of BRC TV 13, and I'm going to be your moderator for tonight's event. BRC 13 is happy to partner with the Times News and the Carbon Chamber and Economic Development Corporation to bring this important political event to our audience, both here at Penn's Peak and at home. Before we begin tonight, I would like to introduce our panelists for this evening. First, we have Marta Gouger. Marta is the editor of the Times News newspaper. Then we have Chris Barrett. Chris is the president and CEO of the Pocono Mountain Visitors Bureau. And we have Marlon Kistner. Marlon is the executive vice president for the Greater Lehigh Valley Chamber of Commerce. And I want to thank you all for agreeing to be part of tonight's event. Marta is going to tell you a little bit about why this event is so important and why our three organizations, four, if we count the Pocono Mountain Visitors Bureau, have decided to get involved. Marlon. Thank you. So good evening. On behalf of the Carbon Chamber and Economic Development Corporation, BRC TV 13, the Times News, and the Pocono Mountain Visitors Bureau, thank you for attending the Carbon County Commissioner's Debate, and thank you to our viewers who are tuning in this evening. Special thanks to the team at BRC TV 13 and Penn's Peak, and thank you to Kim Bell and Marta Gouger, and also Chris Barrett for your partnership in really making this night happen. Carbon County is a beautiful place to work, live, play, and visit. I love this county and find it an absolute honor to serve our businesses and our communities. Our county commissioners are also tasked to lead, serve, and support. So it is our hope that we hear about a future and focus on the goals that are going to support economic development while protecting our beautiful backdrop, community services and support, education and job growth in a positive, informative, and productive light. Thank you again to our candidates and enjoy this evening's debate. Thank you so much, Marlon. We've got some rules for tonight's debate and I'm gonna let you know. Each candidate is going to have a 30-second opportunity to introduce themselves to our audience. Then they will answer a series of questions from our distinguished panelists. The candidates will have one minute to answer each question, and then all the other candidates will have a chance for a 30-second rebuttal. As moderator, I will collect questions from audience members here at Penn's Peak, and I will ask those questions as time allows. Our audience has been prompted and also briefed on proper debate etiquette. They've agreed to remain silent during the question portion of tonight's debate. So without further ado, we're going to take a break and we will be right back with the Carbon County Commissioner's Debate 2019. Don't go away. The Carbon Chamber and Economic Development Corporation's annual awards dinner is an amazing time to come out and honor the folks in Carbon County who are working every day, day in and day out, to achieve their goals, not only with their businesses and organizations that they're involved in, but everything throughout the county. The food, the event, the music, the entertainment, it's a great night to come out with your friends, with your coworkers, and have a great time in Carbon County. If you've not registered, you can do so at carboncountychamber.org. You can sponsor a table, bring raffle prizes. There's so many opportunities to be involved in the event. You don't want to miss it. At Blue Ridge, we're more than just the experts who keep you entertained, connected, and productive. We're your friends and neighbors, part of the fabric that makes up a thriving community. So when you count on us for installation of a new service or tech support when you need it the most, you can be sure that every call and every visit will be handled by the people you know 
the experts you trust. Because we're changing communication for the better. Blue Ridge. Experience life. Connected. Humanity is responsible for endangering many species in both the past and the present. Man can destroy everything, and yet you put the right conservationists in line, and you give them the tools that they need, and man can also restore anything. If we try and work against nature, we are going to wind up losing. This is hardcore conservation on the front line, and this is what it takes. Wildlife Heroes, Mondays on Outdoor Channel. joint project by BRC TV 13, the Times News, and the Carbon Chamber. We're going to begin right away with our first question from Marlon Kistner, and that will be directed to Wayne Notestein. Commissioner, what is your plan to bring business and better paying jobs to the county? It's not just a commissioner's issue. It takes the chamber, economic development, tourism, and the local municipalities working together, uh, including state and federal levels, trying to bring people to Carbon County. Uh, we have to cooperate. I think we have too much uh, uh, regulation, and it's a difficult process, an expensive process, to bring business here to Carbon County. Okay, and we will have a rebuttal from each of the candidates, and we will begin with Bob Jacobs. It's widely recognized that economic development is not just about job creation. It's really about creating a sense of community here in Carbon County. That means that we need to make sure that we are addressing a number of other issues, including quality of life issues like addiction and homelessness, all those things that make our community safe. And so one of the things that I want to do as a commissioner is to make economic development a priority here in Carbon County. It hasn't been one in the Commissioner's Office for the past decade. Thank you. Jerry Strubinger? Yes. It takes strong leadership to bring about things. If, if we have the opportunity to get grants from the state, we can't give them back. Previous commissioners gave them back $5 million down at uh, Packard and Yard. We need strong leadership, and I'm, I'm that strong leader. Thank you. Rocky Arner? Um, I agree with working with the economic development, but one of the things that I see is one of the things that I'm involved in, uh, like how the, uh, the steering committee from Lehighton is, and we're working on trying to develop the town and for the people of the town, not for, you could say, for recreation more or less, but the recreation is going to go with it. So I think working with local municipalities is going to bring that to us. Um, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. And Chris Lukasevich. For Carbon County, economic development has to be based on lower taxes, tax incentives, Absolutely. Synchronization, less regulation, synchronized and coordinated with the municipalities, the federal, state level, through and to achieve the opportunities, the quality of life that we desire here in Carbon County, and to attract our young people back after they have left the area. Thank you. Our next question comes from Chris Barrett, and it is to Bob Jacobs. Thank you. Mr. Jacobs, the current unemployment rate in Carbon County is reported at 5.1% off of historic highs of as much as 12% 10 years ago. Tourism and hospitality is the number one industry in the Pocono Mountains. How will you ensure that local municipalities and school districts are working positively to help our industry retain and attract additional hospitality business that will create sustaining jobs for our people? It's a great question. It really is, tourism is the number one um, industry really in Carbon County. It is the number one in Pennsylvania. We have to work together through the local municipalities, 
with the county in order to make it a priority here. Um, I will make sure that economic development itself is a priority for Carbon County. I will make sure that I'm out in the community, I'm meeting with the organizations um, in order to understand um, what is happening with those organizations and make it a priority for, the, for Carbon County. Okay, thank you. Our first rebuttal from Jerry Strubinger. Yes, economic development comes from one thing particularly, and it's cash. We got to have the banks involved in economic development. We have to go out for grants for our local industries. Go on PCN, and you will see some nice industries around Pennsylvania. So go to, go to cash. We, we need to follow wherever the cash is and get it into Carbon County. Thank you. Rocky Arnold. And I, I wanted to continue on what I said before about economic development. Uh, like the steering committee or Lansford Alive are great things for us to have. Because as a commissioner, if I'm going out and getting somebody to get a, a company to come in here, they want to have things like gymnasiums, food places for their people, because they do have healthy things for their people to do. And you, you just can't go out and say, well, I want to bring jobs to Carbon County, but you have to do something for them companies to come here. Okay, thank you. Chris Lukasiewicz. Hospitality and tourism is extremely important to Carbon County and our quality of life. But we do have an imbalance in our portfolio. So not only must we continue to reinforce tourism, but we must invest not so much in vehicle highways, but the information highway, leveraging 21st century technology to bring in information-centric companies, light and medium manufacturing that can be balanced with the natural beauty of this area. Wayne Notestein. Yes, uh, tourism is an extremely important part in the hotels of Carbon County and the beauty we have here. We need to find a better way, uh, more parking, uh, how to develop our other communities uh, like Jim Thorpe. We need to work on uh, uh, more collaboration between the local municipalities. We need to get them to the table and try to help bring more things into the county. Thank you. Our next question is from Marta Gouger, and it is to Jerry Strubinger. Mr. Strubinger, if elected, what are your top three priorities for your term as county commissioner? The top <clears throat> top priority that I see for the county is go out and seek these new industries in the county. We have strong schools already in the county that educate our people and, and I serve on the Carbon Career and Technical Institute board. We have a wonderful school there. We consolidated the five districts together and formed it. We have, we have a lot of things in our favor. We have to go out and we have to go out and be aggressive about getting this. Thank you. Okay, Rocky Arner. Um, I, I've, one of the things that I would like to do is start uh, doing an assessment. I, I know we have a problem with spa office space, and I think the best thing to do is do an assessment on that and see what we want to do before we draw blueprints up. And I think one of the other things that I would like is a grant writer. I think a grant writer would be a perfect thing to come in and help all the communities, not just the county itself. There's a lot of fire companies and things that do not have a grant rider, and they've been losing out on grant riders just because of that. Thank you. Chris Lukasiewicz. Yeah, my top three priorities. First and foremost, it's to ensure our seniors can age in place longer. And what are we gonna do to do that? It's called the Senior Tax Rebate Program. We need to lower the taxes, at least that portion that the county controls, so our seniors can stay in their home longer, and not when they finish paying off their mortgage, they seem to have another one that goes to the county and the school districts. Number two, economic development, a balanced portfolio, continuing to reinforce, of course, the, the current-centric, tourism-centric, uh, development we have here, expanding that across all 23 municipalities. And lastly, importantly, transparency. Ensuring that every public meeting that this county has, the county commissioners, election board, salary board, retirement board, that it's available to you, live streaming on Facebook or on the internet for your participation. Thank you, Wayne Notstein. The biggest problem the county suffers right now is the 
the caseloads in the court system, the drug problem. That is our financial driver right now. That is why we need more space. That is why we have prison issues, uh, why we need per more people in the adult probation, et cetera. That is the number one financial driver to the county. The volunteer crisis is a big issue. We have other resp uh, companies and uh, people responding to other areas and also the uh, transportation. Thank you. Bob Jacobs. My top three priorities really are all interrelated. The first one has to be economic development that I mentioned earlier. It has to be a priority in, uh, in the commissioner's office. We need to bring in some additional revenue. The other is about protecting our natural resources. We need a solid, comprehensive environmental sustainability plan for Carbon County. And the last thing that I mentioned earlier was quality of life. We need to address homelessness. We need to address uh, the addiction issue. Uh, we need to address quality of education here in order to be able to have good economic development. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is for Rocky Arner, and it's from Marlon Kistner. Rocky, if elected, what will you do to partner with individual boroughs and municipalities to revitalize the business districts and the community spaces, like parks, our recreation centers, walking trails, downtowns? How, do you, how will you partner to make this happen and revitalize our downtowns? Well, I think it comes back to where I brought in about a grant rider and back to Lansford Alive and the Lehigh and Steering Committee. Everyone has to work together like that. You have to connect to the trail. You have to connect to all our resources that are here. And uh, like I said, to attract other businesses into our town, we have to make our town nice. You know, you're not gonna get anybody coming here if we don't have a nice town. So that, that would be like one of the things that I would really wanna do. Now, on the other hand, um, do you wanna have businesses coming in here that are not in the right area? So one of the things that we should do is have a plan where designated businesses would be for, you know, for production, you know, whatever, or whatever it would have to be. You know, we have places where they're coming in and they're applying for something and that's not where they're supposed to be. We have to get back to it that there's designated areas to, to preserve our natural resources. Thank you. Chris Lukasiewicz. Marla. Mm. There are too many communities that still feel they're disenfranchised from the seat of government and the county in itself. We need to bring them into the fold, into the conversation to synchronize and coordinate our effort so that we can ensure that the tide rises and all boats do rise. Now there are some boats that are more heavily laden than others. So therefore we need to bring the municipal leadership in on a regular basis to have that conversation. Likewise, we must be going forth as potential candidates and as commissioners to create that engagement on a regular basis. Thank you. Wayne Notstein. Yes, we need to work with our local municipalities. Uh, we have a program out there, and I don't think the municipalities, the uh, local officials know about the alert attacks, uh, attacks that we can uh, help get funds to these people to repair their buildings, uh, clean up the brownfields, et cetera. It's a, they still pay tax on a property, but it's uh, over a 10-year period. It's on the, based on the development and the cost of increasing those taxes. Thank you. Bob Jacobs. You know, this is all about strategic planning uh, for the county. That's one of the things that we lack here in Carbon County. While we have a county comprehensive plan, that's a well-written plan, we don't have strategic goals on an annual basis. I want to work with all the municipalities that we have, all, all 23 of them here in Carbon County, um, starting off with historical societies and those kinds of institutions that already exist to begin to connect those dots. And uh, we can do that also through the Council of Governments as well. Okay, Jerry Strubinger. Yes, it's uh, economic expansion, it's, that's what it's about, economic expansion. Once we have some sort of economic expansion where we're getting these jobs that pay $20 an hour and have something uh, health benefits with them, a lot of revenue will come into the county. That's what our focus should be and we have to have good roads for these industries that are going to come into our area, and we also have to have good schools, and we have good schools. We just have to keep working on them. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is for Chris Lukasiewicz, and it is from Chris Barrett. Thank you. 
Voters are being asked to elect row officers when the public may have little understanding of what is specific. I'm sorry, could you speak up, please? I, yes, sir, I'm sorry. Voters are being asked to elect row officers when the public may have little understanding of what is specifically required for each position. Would you support a move to home rule, which would, among other things, empower the county to hire for these positions based on individual qualifications? I'm a very strong supporter in home rule. I think that would also allow us to increase the number of uh, county commissioners. I think we need to have broader representation across the county. And by adopting or having a referendum to adopt uh, home rule, that would give us that flexibility to do so. Thank you. Wayne? Uh, I disagree with the uh, home rule in the smaller counties. I see it in the bigger counties at conferences. Uh, I like the setup we do have now with uh, more hands-on commissioners that know what's going on. The others are just part-time, and uh, I don't think they always fully understand uh, all the particulars. But when you're in the office every day and have hands-on, I think uh, this type of government is the best for us. Thank you. Bob Jacobs? I think, you know, it's always interesting to look at home rule and to see how that would play out here in Carbon County. I don't think we're ready for that quite yet here in Carbon County, but it's something really that a commission could be formed in order to see uh, how that would play out in, in the coming years. I personally like the way it's set up right now. I think we need to do a better job by having um, the row officers out and actually out there in the community and uh, sharing what they do for our community, have a better internet as well, better website, I should say, for Carbon County. Thank you. Jerry Strubinger. Yes, home, home rule is in seven counties of, in Pennsylvania. Three of them happen to be our neighbor, Lehigh, Northampton, and Luzerne. Home, home rule is a, we have to ask those counties and get some more information on it before we leap into that. But uh, what we really need amongst our commissioners right now are strong leaders. That's what we need to have. People that are willing to be aggressive and go out and get things for the county. Thank you. Thank you. And Rocky Arner. Yes, I'm not in favor of the home rule. I think I have to agree with Wayne that the hands-on that the commissioners are going to do, if it's creating jobs or working at the prison or whatever has to be done at the county, I think with the home rule, you're gonna lose that. And if you look at it, is it really gonna save the county any money? Because now you have an executive board and now you're hiring everybody else to do the job that we were supposed to do. And that is our job, to serve the people of Carbon County. Thank you. We now have our first question from an audience member, and this one will be for Wayne Notestein. Wayne, how will you help speed up the progress to complete the fire training center at the county for first responders? Could you please, uh, please repeat that? How will you help speed up the progress to complete the fire training center at the county for first responders? How would we speed up the speed process? Speed it up. Well, uh, <laughs> we've ran into a lot of issues in the last several years between rattlesnake studies and all the environmental issues. Uh, we are in the final planning stages of the building itself, putting the specs together uh, for that building. We were looking at doing the land uh, development uh, part of it in another phase in the very near future. I'm waiting for the final plans and then the final plans uh, in early 2020 for the building itself. Bob Jacobs? Well, we definitely need to continue to do this very as quickly as we can. I've looked at the plans. I think that uh, the center looks, um, it's, it's quite impressive what, what has been developed so far. I would like to see that we actually create a first responders commission here in Carbon County and to have every municipality involved in that commission so that we can not only uh, look at the uh, center, but also all the other issues that um, are there for emergency management services. Jerry Strubinger. We definitely need a center for our firemen to, to be taught, our emergency people to be taught their spe specific uh, duties, and the, the center over near the prison over there that they're gonna develop. We can also put some solar panels over there to help pay for the electricity that's being generated by 
the, uh, the center over there. Thank you. Okay. Rocky Arner. I don't think there's really anything that could speed up the process of this well-needed center. Um, but the thing about it, I think we should keep in contact with our local legislators to try to keep their feet in the fire on this project to get it done. I mean, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people look at this that it's to save lives, but I look at it in another way also that our firemen are going into these buildings. And I think about this young fireman with a wife and child at home, and we want him to come home safe also. And if he doesn't come home safe, you're in trouble. Thank you. Okay. Chris Lucas Evans. Of all 67 counties, in this commonwealth, I believe we should have the best trained, best educated, best equipped and incentivized volunteer firefighters anywhere. But we have to do it in a fiscally responsible manner. This board of commissioners we currently have just two months before the election stopped a large investment into that particular structure and facility. Might it not be because six similar facilities are within about 31 miles? I would ask that instead of speeding it forward, that we take a pause, reassess, and determine working with the chiefs of the fire departments, what are the needs, not the wants, in Time. regards to that facility. Thank you. We're going to take a brief commercial break, and we will be right back with the Carbon County Commissioner's debate. Don't go away. Here. I felt this overwhelming, get out, get out. What, what the, the hell? hell? You have to take on the best. Because anything can happen in a blink of an eye. So you climb into the ring and take your shot. Oh! Premier Boxing Champions on Fox FS1 and the Fox Sports app. To add high definition and get the FS1 channel in HD, call 800 Cable 77. As the holidays approach, please remember those who have given so much, the defenders of our freedom. The Stocking for Soldiers program is looking for practical gifts and comfort items to send to our soldiers just in time for the holiday season. Help us fill 10,000 stockings for our troops by dropping off donations at our local Blue Ridge Communications Office by November 9th. A list of requested items may be found on the Keystone Military Family's Facebook page. Don't miss this opportunity to make a difference for our American heroes. Chamber and Economic Development Corporation's annual awards dinner is an amazing time to come out and honor the folks in Carbon County who are working every day, day in and day out, to achieve their goals, not only with their businesses and organizations that they're involved in, but everything throughout the county. The food, the event, the music, the entertainment, it's a great night to come out with your friends, with your coworkers, and have a great time in Carbon County. If you've not registered, you can do so at carboncountychamber.org. You can sponsor a table, bring raffle prizes. There's so many opportunities to be involved in the event. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back to the Carbon County Commissioner's Debate. We're going to give each of the candidates a moment to tell you a little bit about them, starting with Wayne Notstein. Good evening, everyone. I'm Wayne Notstein. I'm on my fifth term currently, my 20th year as a county commissioner. 
I've been extremely active in many of the organizations uh, throughout the county, getting the COG going, the uh, Partners for Progress, Interagency, Family and Collaborative, because I really believe success is through communication and collaboration with everyone. Thank you. Bob Jacobs. Good evening. I'm Bob Jacobs. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I was born and raised uh, in Nesquahoning. I, for the last uh, 20 years, I've been living in Talmansing Township. I spent 30 years in the charitable community, uh, working in the charitable community, and I was CEO of a, a well-respected, nationally accredited organization, leading 200 employees and serving thousands of individuals and families in need. It's a pleasure for me to be here, and I look forward to answering more questions this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry Strubinger. I'm a native of Jim Thorpe, lifelong native of Jim Thorpe. Uh, what we need, what we need today, are new ideas for the uh, next board of commissioners. Uh, we don't need any more taxes. We can we can get along with economic expansion. Our budget's seventy million dollars right now. I've served on the Jim Thorpe Area School District for an excess of twenty some years, and that's a legislative body. I know how to work within a legislative body. Thank you. Thank you, Rocky Arner. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rocky Arner. I'm a lifelong resident of Carbon County. I'm from Franklin Township, and I've been involved in a lot of organizations from the Franklin Fire Company, Franklin Little League, to volunteering for the Mahoney Fire Company. I've also been the president of the Heighton School District from 2011 and 2012, where we saved the school district $1 million on health care, and we also brought K through 12 drug and alcohol curriculum to our school. Um, I also spoke in Washington, D.C. and Harrisburg. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Lukasevich. Good evening. I'm Chris Lukasevich, Colonel U.S. Army, retired. It's an honor, a privilege to have earned the right to be on this stage with Wayne, Bob, Jerry, and Rocky. My mission tonight is to ensure that each and every one of you are the best informed voters possible. Because on 5 November, I want to ensure you're making the decision that is best for you, your family, and our community. I'm Chris Lukasevich, and if it matters to you, it does indeed matter to me. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. We will continue with our questions. Our next question is from Marta Gouger, and it is for Bob Jacobs. Bob, we've already talked a little bit about the drug problem in the county. What is your plan to address the rising substance use epidemic, which includes opioids, heroin, methamphetamines, and other substances? So I have been a 30-year uh, career in human services, um, as I said earlier, including um, having a background in mental health and drug and alcohol as well at our organization. I've been a part of the opiate task force as well here in Carbon County. What we need to do here in Carbon County, one of the things, is to continue to bring in more services. While we have some good mental health and we have a great drug and alcohol commission, it's not enough. And we also need to bring in some private agencies. That's been a real challenge for Carbon County, is to bring private agencies into Carbon County, as well as to do more and more work on the prevention side, getting to children early on during the elementary years to help them to understand the impact of drug and alcohols have um, on our society. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry Strubinger. Yes, <clears throat> we must impact our youth in the teenage years, the, the prior teenage years. Our school district, Jim Thorpe Area School District, for the first time, hires social workers. We, we're taking some of the the heat off of the county with their children's services. So we have to get down to that level and, and make sure that the, uh, the students are aware of what's bad for them because parents are not at home any longer. There's broken families and we need to support the children. Thank you. Rocky Arner. Yes, the Carver Monroe Pike uh, drug and alcohol is overloaded. And I do agree that we have to bring some other outside sources in for help. But the main thing is educating people from the kids. Like I said, we brought that in the Heighton Area School District, K through 12 cu curriculum. And you also have to do that to the seniors. 
you have to bring this to the senior centers because they're the ones that are actually taking the kids, they're raising them, or they could even be an addicted person. So I think we have to, to cover the whole county from every age group. Thank you. Chris Lukasevich. Having been involved in drug interdiction for 19 years, leading the Department of Defense's largest counter-drug effort out of the U.S. Embassy in Bogota, Colombia, I understand that unilaterally as a county, there is minimal impact we can have, but we do have to strive to make a difference. I would like to focus on short of prison options, or what I refer to as SOPO. While we work on finding options to keep these drug addicts, drug abusers, provide them opportunities short of prison, we accomplish two things. We provide them the services and we reduce our prison population. Thank you. Wayne Notestein. Yes, I'm currently involved in a drug and alcohol needs assessment program as well as the reentry who we just got a, a grant to rewrite the strategic plan. Also, the Child and Family Collaborative Board is updating their state of the child and family. And uh, this will give us a picture of what is happening throughout Carbon County with many of the statistics. We're including more uh, agencies at this time. And we hope to have a report ready uh, in early or uh, mid-May. Thank you. Our next question is for Jerry Strubinger from Marlon Kistner. Jerry, at the Chamber, we have a Young Professionals Committee. What would your plan be to empower and support those working with and under you to grow into the next generation of leaders in our community? Well, Jim, Thorpe area, uh, Jim Thorpe's Borough Council has a, has a young person on their council already. We have to train the young people coming along and make them realize what's going, going on around their community. And these are, these are some of the things that can happen at our schools. We have great schools, and we just need to point to those things. Thank you. Rocky Arner. Um, I think a person like this we should have to go out to our local schools and make all of our students aware of what is a, a, you know, happening in our county, because these kids are going to be our future. So I think we should try to connect with them a little bit more, because they're coming here, and they're leaving and we're losing them. We gotta keep these good kids here in town. Chris Lukasevich. In March of this year, I proposed and published my vision for Carbon County, which included 24 day one motions to be made if elected. Number 12 was to create a commissioner's student advisory group. I'd like to see two representatives from each school district here in Carbon County to include Hazleton, in which we do have students attending, to regularly engage and be the vehicle or the medium in which the commissioners can stay better connected with the youth and determine their needs, their desires, their wants. Thank you. Wayne Notstein. Yes, years ago uh, we had a program where we taken the uh, commissioners meetings on the road to the different school districts in the whole county. There was only one school district that participated in that at the time and uh, we did that for two or three years. Uh, I think we need to we do have government day where we bring in the students, but we need to get out there and work with the students even more or try to reinstitute that to get the students involved in government. Bob Jacobs. I'm going to focus a little bit different on really as an employer for Carbon County. One of the things that we have to do within the county itself is to make sure that we are developing good leadership within the county. That really doesn't exist today. We need to make sure that we have good performance management programs going on within the county, within each one of those departments, and also to make sure that we have good succession planning uh, for each one of those departments, including within the county commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is for Rocky Arner, and it is from Chris Barrett. Mr. Arner, tourism and healthcare, two industries that are critical to the uh, Poconos region, if elected, how do you plan to help expand and support those industries. Could you repeat that again? I, I yes. cannot hear you here. Okay, tourism and healthcare, the two industries that are critical to the success of the Poconos. Tourism and healthcare. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, if elected, how do you plan to help expand and support those industries? Well, we're having a great start in Carbon County right now with the hospitals coming. And I think like with the healthcare itself, uh, we have to have sort of like a consortium with all other areas to sort of cover that money. 
for, you know, for the county or for the school district. And as for the tourism, um, we don't want to lose the train. <laughs> uh, we want to uh, push. We have the DNL trail that's coming through. A great thing that there was a lot of money spent on, and it's not, you know, and everybody thinks it's for tourism, but there's a lot of people that are our local people that use that. So um, I think that's the best thing push for our DNL trail. Thank you. Chris Lukasevich. Right. When we talk tourism and health care, first and foremost, it looks like we're talking again about economics, but the reality is health care is critical. We have a graying tsunami here in Carbon County. Over 20% of our population are senior citizens. We need to ensure that they can age in place, and that means stay in their homes, stay in their communities, stay in their county. We do have to continue to create incentives so St. Luke's Lehigh Valley Hospital Network continue to invest in our community and allow us to increase the quality of life and to ensure that we have longevity here Thank in Carbon you. County. Wayne Notestein. Yes, we need to get our planning department more involved in the development and work uh, more closely with the Chamber and our Economic Development Corporation. We've been doing a better job on uh, bringing these people to the table with the uh, economic development. We were sitting on $800,000, was going nowhere. We finally have over $500,000 loaned out in revolving loans that keeps coming back. But we need to work more with the local municipalities in coordination and cooperation. And uh, we could do that through the COG, and unfortunately, they're not all members. Thank you. Bob Jacobs. This, this goes back to what I said earlier, uh, which is that we need to do more strategic planning here in this county. We're not doing enough of it. And I agree with Wayne. I think with the planning office, that, that's an area that we can start to see where they can actually spend much more time. And one of the things that I've realized with economic and having economic development here in Carbon County is we really have very little incentives that we have built into, uh, into that process of encouraging more um, companies to come in, whether it's about health care or tourism. So I'd Thank like to you. explore that. Mm -hmm. Jerry Strubinger. Health care in the county starts, starts with the Office on Aging. We have to boost that, that particular office up that it will be able to take care of the needs of the aging population. And then going back to tourism, tourism actually saved Jim Thorpe's real estate property. Without tourism coming to Jim Thorpe, the place, uh, buildings were falling down and it was in desperate need of repair. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is for Chris Lukasevich, and it's from Marta Gouger. Yes. Packerton Yards has been a long-standing issue for Carbon County, first in the attempt to develop it and then in the attempt to sell it. What do you think can be done with the property? Well, Marta, thanks for the question. So I propose either to sell Packerton Yards, what remains of it, uh, since we've given or conveyed 23 acres to Lee Heighton. If we can't sell it or it shouldn't be sold, we definitely need to consider the option of a rail-based shuttle that first and foremost can help alleviate some of the challenges that our county seat has and the tourism industry. Secondly, I would like to see it converted in the, to a potential solar energy park, although I do believe there are other options out there for actually utilization by the county, such as open park space uh, for our county residents. Thank you. Wayne Notstein. Yes, it's uh, been a very uh, difficult subject. We have tried very hard. We had a lot of grant money and uh, lack of cooperation with the local municipality in making something happen there. The, uh, unfortunately, the deal fell through, but we have advertised it t at least twice to go out on bids. Twice we had bidders, and both times at the last minute the bids had been pulled economic development or, uh, or the chamber has been trying to uh, sell it, but uh, we have been successful, unsuccessful. Thank you. Bob Jacobs. We know that this uh, Packerton Yard has been a real um, sore spot for a lot of people and it's really emotionally charged. I would agree, I think we need to really look at trying to sell it at this point. If we can't do that, and there have been a couple options as were mentioned, then we need to really look and see what we could do regarding open space. Um, you know, I walked there recently, um, I saw what it was all about, and uh, to me, based on its location, um, some type of open park situation uh, could be viable for, uh, for Packaging Yard. Thank you. Jerry Strubinger. 
we won't be able to sell the Packard and Yards while the rail line runs down the middle of it. They should have taken, the former commissioner should have taken the five million dollars and moved the rail over against the river. Now you don't have any obstructions for traveling in and out of the out of the yard and it becomes valuable at that point. Right now it's not valuable and I, I propose that let's use it somehow or another. Thank you. Rocky Arner. Um, I'm looking at it. I mean, there's thoughts of selling it or doing things there, but I think we really got to look into it. If we sell it, are we selling ourselves out for other options that are available later? And I know with putting maybe solar parks or anything like that in, that's a lot of investment for the county to do. Uh, and solar is good, but is it going to last us 20 years and are we going to have to reinvest in that again? So otherwise than that, I think we should look at all our options first before we do sell it. Thank you. Our next question is from Marlon Kistner, and it's for Wayne Notestein. Wayne, with the ongoing challenge of parking and traffic in downtown Jim Thorpe, there is an opportunity to utilize other parts of the county to support office staff and storage facilities. If reelected, would you consider collaborating with countywide municipalities for the potential to locate and relocate some of the county's staff and facilities to these communities with the available real estate? And if so, what would be your first step? Uh, it is possible, but uh, again, uh, we have to, by law, we have to keep the county seat in Jim Thorpe. The courthouse has to be right there. There are some other offices we may be able to move and get away with, but uh, when it's court related, it becomes a financial issue, a time issue, and having the, uh, the people that are in inside, in and out of the courthouse all the time, having the time, travel time, finding places to park, et cetera. So an ex uh, it's not an easy solution, and every time we go to purchase a building, they want more than it's worth. We try to rent, they want more than uh, the going rate, plus on top of that, they want us to pay for the renovations of their building, which we cannot pay to renovate someone else's building. So uh, in developing, yeah, it would help, and going back to Packard and Yard, I have a drawing in my office where uh, it would be nice to have that train station there, and I wish we could sell it to the railroad bring passengers into Packard and, and then into Jim Thorpe. Thank you. Bob Jacobs. The short answer for me is yes, we need to really look at those other municipalities to see what we can do. You know, regarding the office space and the, and the impact that it has on parking, we need to hire a consultant. We need to have that consultant come in and really do a good operations study, looking at court-related versus non-court-related um, operations. And then from there, it'll tell us, as long as we're doing good forecasting, the kinds of options that are available and whether or not we can consolidate our current office space or move forward to those other Thank municipalities. You. Thank you. Jerry Strubinger. Yes. In looking around the, the present uh, buildings that, uh, that houses the Carbon County Court, I think we ought to look at the, what they call today the administrative building. To the rear of that is the of a parking lot for people that work in there. 1963, they tore down a huge mansion there. I think we ought to look there to build an office, bring it back down with a garage underneath it, put an office building above it. I think that would be a great thing. Thank you, Rocky Arner. Um, it could be a possibility to move some areas to say Lehighton or Palmerton, but most of the, the things that are in the office, the office is there, are related to each other. I mean, I think the thing is to try to look at technology. You know, we're renting buildings to store paper. Why are we doing that? We should upgrade our technology, and maybe we don't have to have these other buildings, and we would have space for the people in Jim Thorpe. Thank you. Chris Lukasevich. For the county employees, there is not a parking problem. There's over 100 open spaces every morning when I drive by that county lot. Same reason we don't need a two-level parking garage on Susquehanna Street. Now, for tourism on the weekends and other times, yes, that's a need. But parking is not needed for the county itself, the employees. Office space, we haven't done the assessment. How much do we have? How much do we need? Can we forecast out 20 years to see what our needs may be? Then we can start talking about if we need to relocate, move people. Let's start thinking about telecommuting. Over 20% of our employees could telecommute. The next question is from a member of our audience, 
and this is for Bob Jacobs. What would you do if you were currently in office about the train situation in Jim Thorpe? Well, the first thing that I would have done is actually begin to have a conversation with the owners of the railroad and with the borough. The commissioners made a decision to kind of back off because legally it was believed that they have, you know, there's no merit there. I always believe it's important to have good conversations going. And I would, I would have encouraged both the Mueller family and the borough to come together like, it's, like it has happened um, recently uh, this past Thursday. Thank you. Jerry Strubinger. The train situation in Jim Thorpe has a history that Mr. Muller has, has gotten a lot of benefits from the county in that we, we, he only pays the county 36, 33 to $36,000 a year to use our land to run his things over. The, the county just did a, a grant for him to, to build the bridge above the Glen there, Nesquoning Junction, they used to call it. But Mr. Mr. Muller has to realize what he's doing there is, in fact, tourism. Thank you. Rocky Arner. Um, I would like to sit down with all the entities and hash this out. I think it's miscommunication between everybody. You know, uh, and, and I think I could be the person because I talk to everybody. I get along with everybody, and I'm the mediator. So I think we got to sit down and talk to this because we do need the train, but Jim Thorpe also needs the taxes. So there can be an alleviation to this problem. Thank you. Chris Lukasevich. Right. Private public government cooperation is critical in this particular issue. As Commissioner Nostein Wells knows, though, there are specific duties and responsibilities in the county code for the the commissioners. However, there's an implied task, which is advocacy. When it impacts your, the quality of life for residents here in Carbon County, there is a responsibility of our commissioners to be engaged as advocates for all citizens of the county. Bring them to the table, facilitate conversation. Thank you. Wayne Notestein. Uh, yes, it's, uh, I can understand both sides, both the borough and the railroad. What did we just say earlier about taxation and keeping businesses out of an area. Right now, because of the lawsuit, uh, I, I hesitate in getting involved in the local politics. But if things uh, keep going like this, they are talking now. Hopefully, they come up with a solution. If not, I will personally contact Mr. Mueller and see if we can come up with a solution. Thank you, candidates. We will be back in just a moment with lots more of the Carbon County Commissioner's debate. Don't go away. The Carbon Chamber and Economic Development Corporation's annual awards dinner is an amazing time to come out and honor the folks in Carbon County who are working every day, day in and day out, to achieve their goals, not only with their businesses and organizations that they're involved in, but everything throughout the county. The food, the event, the music, the entertainment, it's a great night to come out with your friends, with your coworkers, and have a great time in Carbon County. If you've not registered, you can do so at carboncountychamber.org. You can sponsor a table, bring raffle prizes. There's so many opportunities to be involved in the event. You don't want to miss it. Time starts right now, on demand. Simba, 
the one true key. Disney's The Lion King, rated PG. The newest movies are in your home with Movies On Demand. Welcome back to this election special, live from Penn's Peak in beautiful Jim Thorpe. I'm Kim Bell, your moderator for tonight's event, and this is a debate for the Carbon County Commissioners. We're going to pick up right where we left off with a question from Chris Barrett, and it is going to Jerry Strubinger. Mr. Strubinger, what would you do to improve access to vital county information? You know, you're going to have to repeat that, please. What would you do to improve access to vital county information? Vital county, I, don't, I didn't hear the last How part. How would you improve access to vital county information? Well, I'm a believer in transparency. Whatever goes on has to be passed on to the public so they know that they have the confidence in their leaders, and except for litigation, Sometimes you can't, or personnel matters. But other than that, transparency is, the, is very important. Thank you. Rocky Arner. I think it's vital to give the, the residents of Carbon County all the information they need. Now, you can't give them their private information, but I've always felt if somebody walked in the door, if they wanted to know something about a certain problem, I think they should know the, the situation, what's going on. Chris Lukasiewicz. Absolutely. We need less right to knows and more you already know. There's one individual on this stage who's been live streaming the Carbon County Commissioner meetings for the last 15 months to bring transparency, to bring accountability to our elected officials. That needs to continue. It needs to expand. It needs to be the prison board, which I just started live streaming. It needs to be the election board, the salary board, the retirement board. If it's a public meeting, you should be able to access it virtually if you can't be there physically present. Thank you. Wayne Notestein. Yes, I agree. We do need to improve our uh, public access and uh, let our voters and constituents know what's going on. Uh, we have improved a little bit on that, especially with our mapping system, GIS. You can go up, you can go in there, look into uh, property parcels, uh, uh, names, owners, etc. So that is accessible now. But uh, there's many other things that we need to improve on in uh, getting that out there. Bob Jacobs. Obviously, openness and transparency is critical to county government. But there are many things that we can do. The first thing is we have to um, totally overhaul the website that we have in the county. It's very outdated. It even showing census information from 2000. So there are some, many different things, including within each county row office. There are certain things that we should be able to access that would be online that right now someone has to get in their car and drive to Jim Thorpe to get. Thank you. Our next question is for Rocky Arner and it is from Marta Gouger. Yes. Uh, Rocky, what issues do you see facing the Carbon County Correctional Facility, and what steps would you take to address those issues? Well, I, th I think some of the issues that we're already facing is the, 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 what the building is. The building itself is sort of getting dilapidated, and I'm thinking that we should have done something in phases in a three-year plan to update everything in the prison. Uh, I mean, you can see it like with the, all the things with pipes breaking and whatever's going on. Uh, and I think that's not just for, the, for the, the prison, but I think over the entire county. We have to have a plan that we're working on our buildings and not letting them go for 20 years and then all of a sudden now we gotta fix them. So that would be my plan for the prison. Thank you. Chris Lukasiewicz. Yeah, unquestionably, we need a short, medium, and long-term maintenance plan, but we also need to be forecasting out our budget to meet those maintenance or replacement needs as they arrive, rise at the prison. Overpopulation, 244 individuals on average, we're spending about $5.4 million up there, right? 29000 on each prisoner, right? We need shorter prison options for those who aren't violent offenders and won't cause any harm uh, to the civilian population on the streets. We also need to look at the mentally challenged, uh, the psychiatric problems, and get them into other facilities and out of our county Thank prison. Thank you. Wayne Notestein. 
Yes, unfortunately, uh, the system was not designed as it should have been with redundant systems. Uh, when something goes down, uh, such as the well, when the wires burned off, we wasted a lot of money bringing a generator in there and could not, we had to go out to the bidding process. But uh, things are falling apart, it's 25 years old. We need to replace the existing uh, uh, piping. I think we need to, I know we have to build another tank because when this tank needs repairs, we have to have somebody, something ready to go. Mental health also Thank is you. a major issue. Bob Jacobs. It's been said we need to do more planning. We need to actually have a capital expense plan here in Carbon County. But most importantly for me when it comes to the correctional facility is we need to continue to look at evidence-based practices, innovative practices, so that we don't have to have as many going into uh, in, in there to begin with, and while they're there, that they get the services they need. The last thing I did as a CEO at Pinebrook was to bring $300,000 into Carbon County to help uh, women who are incarcerated in the county jail. Thank you. Our next question is from Marlon Kistner, and it is for, no wait, I'm sorry, it's for Rocky Arner, correct? Yes, Rocky Arner. It's for Chris. I Thank think you. I got the first, last one correct. Sorry, Rocky. Chris Lukasevich, and it's from Marlon Kistner. Okay, Chris. Yes, Marlon. Employee health care is often a top three line item for businesses. How do you plan to evaluate the high cost of health care benefits offered to county employees, but ensure that they are taken care of? Well, first and foremost, we do have an HR department, and that first level responsibility falls to Dawn in the HR department to assess the entitlements, to ensure that we're meeting the needs of our employees. At the same time, we're doing that in a fiscally responsible manner. Now, there are some statutory requirements that we always must meet when it comes to entitlements and benefits. We have to stay within those left and right limits. But we want to continue to ensure we're providing the benefits entitlements that our employees need so that they are retained and will stay here with the county and provide us the depth of technical expertise that is required in so many of these offices uh, that the row officers have first level responsibility for. Okay, thank you. Wayne Notestein. Yes, uh, we do have a consultant that works with us on the insurance issues, uh, but what we're dealing with is not only the non-union, but the four or five different unions that we have that we have to deal with. And in those contracts, it's spelled out, you know, what level of care that we're required to do, the co-pays, uh, things of that nature. We, and if we go trying to change it, it has to be at least equal. We are privately insured, administered by a, a high mark, but uh, we do go out. Thank you. Bob Jacobs. I think we have to look at really what is happening in the private sector relative to insurances and to see how that can be applied um, within county government as well. So, having come from the private nonprofit sector, you know, it's one of the things that we had to really do to make sure that we were staying competitive. And so I would want to open that up to look and see uh, what we can do in order to maintain our competitiveness uh, in the market. Thank you. Jerry Strubinger. Yes. Uh, schools in our area form consortiums, and it, it protects each individual school with having bad claims. I think we need to do that with the counties also. Merge them together in consortiums. Get a good get a good price on the on the the cost of the insurance and go from there. Everyone needs insurance today, or you're going to be sick for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Rocky Arner. Um, I'm coming back to where we did form a consortium to save a million dollars at Lehighton School District, and that's what we could do. But I I don't think the problem is with us forming a consortium. It's with the high cost of health care. I mean, I think asking us as commissioners is the wrong question. I think you should be asking other people that question why they're not doing something about the health care. We're fighting for our, our employees, and we're supposed to raise their health care 50% or their co-pay $30 just because they're making more money. I think we're asking the wrong people, and we should ask somebody else instead Thank of the commissioners you. about that problem. Our next question is for Wayne Notestein, and it's from Chris Barrett. 
Thank you. Campaign signs cost East Canada thousands of dollars, clutter our communities and can potentially become litter and a source of conflict. In lieu of signs, would you support a county policy that has candidates contribute funds towards the creation of a printed book or website for voters to actually learn about the candidates for office and what they stand for? I don't think uh, more than just myself. I don't think two or three of the other candidates that could really understand the question. Can you try and one more time? Sure. sure. Campaign signs cost each candidate thousands of dollars, clutter our communities, and can potentially become litter and a source of conflict. In lieu of signs, would you support a county policy that has candidates contribute funds toward the creation of a printed book or website for voters to actually learn about the candidates for office and what they stand for? I'm not sure I fully understand the whole question. The question from what I gather is that instead of candidates placing signs throughout the county, that the candidates would have to advertise in a book and then the book would be distributed to all of the voters and in the county and would you be in favor of such a book? Yes, I would. I think uh, there's a lot of trash out there along the highways now and I can't wait till the day after mm -hmm. election to get it out mm -hmm. of there, out of the, uh, off the highways. Uh, even if we didn't do that, I know it would be legislative that we have to go by, but I think uh, we should limit the amount of signs or come up with another method. I know we're going to get some backlash uh, from the people that sell those signs, because if you look at all the signs for the primary and to this election, how many were sold, somebody's making a lot of money on us, and it's not helping our environment or our tourism when you have all that trash along the highways. Thank you. Bob Jacobs. I would absolutely be open to looking at alternatives. The, the bottom line is it costs a tremendous amount to run for office, and a lot of that has to do with the printed materials. This is my first time running for a political office, and quite frank, frankly, I was quite naive regarding what it would cost, uh, particularly for those materials. So I would be open to creative, innovative solutions to lower the cost and to be green. Thank you. Jerry Strubinger. Yes, I'm, I'm in favor of uh, election reform with regard to that. Get rid of the, the signs, the clutter, as you call them, but it has to be across the board with everyone because they propagate when they see other ones coming out with signs. Thank you. Thank you. Rocky. Yes, I would like to get rid of the signs. <laughs> I have a few big signs, and I probably only have 100 small yard signs. So I would be in favor of that. And I think like what I have done, I have a website with everything on that I've done for the past 30 years. I think people should get a website and people should look at it and know the candidate because you're not gonna know the candidate until you research what they've done in the past 30 years. Thank you. Chris Lukasiewicz. There's too much litter. There's too much lack of respect for private property, right? Websites, absolutely about putting everything in a book and not allowing uh, signs? Absolutely not. I spent 34 years to defend that amendment, right? The First Amendment that gives us the right to free speech. Absolutely opposed to limiting my free speech or any citizen in this county. Thank you. Our next question is from Marta Gouger and it's for Bob Jacobs. Bob, the county has been primarily a daytime weekday operation. Would you consider having nighttime and weekend hours so that people can access the county services? And would you consider having nighttime meetings and meetings maybe around the county rather than based in Jim Thorpe? The, the short answer is yes, and it really goes back to what I said earlier. I would like to see that we do, we bring in a consultant and do a good county operations study, like I mentioned earlier. You know, separate court-related versus non-court-related duties. Determine how we could staff that, how we can look at remote um, working as well but also look at being much more customer friendly. In the private sector, that's what happened. In government, it's not happening for the most part. And so I would be open to that, including having um, commissioners meetings potentially at a different time 
or at least occasionally having them, um, maybe on a quarterly basis to start. Thank you. Jerry Strubinger. Yes, I'd like to see the commissioners' meetings travel around the county. It appears to me that when I attend commissioners' meetings, they don't need a whole lot of pertinent information right on the spot. So they're well versed in what's going on. I would like to see the, the commissioners go on the travel around the county. Thank you. Rocky Arner. Um, we did discuss this already amongst a couple of us. And I think it would be a good idea to have the commissioners' meetings, even if it would be once a month and you'd have one in Lehigh, you'd have the next month in Palmerton and maybe up in Trescott so that everybody throughout the county can voice their opinion to us. And for going on the weekend, um, I don't know about that because we'd have to look into that. Is it going to cost us more money? And I think maybe getting more technology again, what I said, so that people Thank have you. better access to the county records, what they need, Thank or forms you. that they have to fill out. Chris Lukasevich. Right. Primarily the row officers are responsible for those services that would uh, need to be expanded or have flex hours. So first and foremost, I think it would be worthwhile to talk to the row officers to see if that is a, a pilot program could be run to see if it is cost effective and that the citizenry uh, responds to that. Bob, I gotta say, bring in a consultant. Unfortunately, that tends to be the first answer. That's not the right answer. The answer is let's hire good people. Let's come up with internal solutions first and foremost. Then Thank we can you. spend another $25,000. Wayne Notstein. Uh, yeah, I would like to see it. Years ago, they used to take the show uh, on the road, and they had problems getting people to even up to open up the facility to host the meeting. I would be in favor of it if you're going to have people attend the meetings. We have a, meetings at night now. Uh, for the set, setting the salaries, et cetera, and no one shows up. So that's the problem and the additional cost of opening weekends. If you want it, you're going to have to pay for it because it's additional hours, security, et cetera. Thank you. Our next question is for Jerry Strubinger, and it's from Marlon Kistner. If elected, will you address absentee property owners in Carbon County who do not maintain buildings that they own? I believe that uh, Jim Thorpe was, as I said before, Jim Thorpe was rescued by the people coming in from out of town and buying our, our real estate. I certainly want to see our real estate that's dilapidated uh, be bolstered somehow or another. I would have liked to have seen some of the, the Victorian type structures in Jim Thorpe being preserved, uh, but definitely we need to address them and help where we can. Thank you. Rocky Arner. Yes, I would like to address that because one of the issues that I see, and it's across the whole county, um, the zoning laws might fine them $10 a day. Uh, I'd like to see them fining them more dollars a day, and then they don't get their attention. When they have something that tallies up to fines that are $20,000 a year instead of just $120, that's where the problem is, and I think all the zonings got to be re reorganized. Thank you. Yeah. Chris Lukasevich. Yeah, unquestionably, absentee landlords are a rising problem. We're starting to see considerable blight uh, and a lot of turnover in rental properties and others. Uh, it is a municipality issue that the county must work with the municipalities to resolve uniformity and fines and regulations would help, so you don't have simply absentee land order, land land or excuse me property owners moving from one community to the other thank you wayne notstein uh yes we definitely have to find a better way to hold the absentee la uh, absentee landlords more accountable it's difficult when they live out of county uh, the uh, municipalities and the county have to get more strict and as soon as they start getting behind or their property starts to uh, be blighted uh, we need to hold them accountable somehow, and I don't have the answer, but I think we need to work with our state and federal because these, a lot of these people are out of county. They aren't going to pay their fines. They just buy the house, and boom, they're done. They're out of here. Thank you. Bob Jacobs. It's clearly a, an issue in certain areas um, throughout the county, and I've had many conversations with uh, 
some of the local municipality folks. And, and so one of the things that we've talked about is, you know, could there be some type of state legislation that is passed that would have a little bit more teeth in it? Uh, but locally, it, to me, this is something that the Council of Governments possibly could take up, uh, the COG as it's called. It's, it's clearly something that in every municipality there are those properties, and it's a, I think it's a, a matter that can be uh, vetted through that process. Thank you. Our last two questions are going to be from members of the audience. This one is for Rocky Arner. Why should a brand new voter cast their vote for you? What was the question? On November 5th, Election Day, why should a brand new voter voting for the first time cast their ballot for you? Um, I think if they would research what I've done over the past years, uh, I've always been there to help everybody. And I would like to meet that fir person, first of all, before they would go in. Because I think when somebody always talks to me, they wind up liking me. And that's a good feeling that I get. I mean, I get that all the way across the county. And all of these good candidates here, I've never attacked them. I always have good conversations with them. And that's what I always said. I'm the mediator, and I can straighten things out. And I hope that's why they would vote for me. Chris Lukasevich. For 34 years, the American taxpayer invested in my training, my education, my leadership and management experience. You invested in me. I have the skills, the training to make a positive difference and to give every citizen of Carbon County once again a voice at the table that I believe has been missing since I started attending commissioners meetings uh, three years ago. Thank you. Wayne notes time. Yeah, I, uh, I've been so active in many things since uh, 1999 when we started the Partners for Progress. A lot of successes came out of that. The Interagency and Family Collaborative Board working on family and aging issues, bringing in speakers every year, working on the issues that matter. Uh, state associations, I'm also active in the uh, Military Veterans Affairs Committee and the Sheriff's Training Board in Education also. Uh, as well as uh, training. The training center is for police and fire. Thank you. Bob Jacobs. Now, I've spent my entire career practically in leadership roles, and I would want that person to really look carefully at what I've accomplished. You know, I was CEO of a good-sized organization that was there to help others, thousands of individuals that were cared for and served through the work um, of that organization. I think a great example of my work is the recent establishment of the Homelessness Task Force that we created about nine months ago. And in that work, we've already accomplished some good things, including an announcement that came out with bringing two agencies together and a new shelter that's going Thank to open you. shortly. Jerry Strubinger. I like your rock. <laughs> <laughs> I will talk to this new voter about the schools that we have locally here. We have some good school districts here and I, w I was part of that developing the school districts. And you should, and I would e extend to that new voter to look into my record as a school board member and for sure they will understand that I'm, I'm about to move the, the things into the future and not talk about the past. Thank, Thank you. you. Our final question of the evening goes to Chris Lukasevich and it's from an audience member. What would you do to support economic development and bring jobs into Carbon County? Well, I hate to be repetitive, Wayne. As you know, sometimes I seem to be at the commissioner's meeting. But nonetheless, it is really bringing together the interested, the stakeholders, the equity holders, develop a comprehensive strategic plan that focuses on, again, not vehicular highways, but the information highway. We need to find a way to create incentives where that light medium manufacturing can come into this county. Now, we can't over incentivize them or it could cause problems in the long run, but we need to bring together all the stakeholders, public, private, government, and nonprofits to work on that plan, develop, execute it, and, and carry it out. Thank you. Wayne Notstein. Yes, I agree with the most of that. We got to get everyone to the table, mm -hmm. and uh, that's been our big difficult. 
local, state, and federal at the same time uh, have to work together. Like Bob was just talking about the task force, in a few months, when you work together, you can make things happen. And that's the only way we're going to work, uh, working with our elected officials in Harrisburg, as et cetera. That's how we make it happen. Thank you, Bob Jacobs. I said it earlier, I'll say it again. One of the main reasons we can do it is that if we have commissioners who are really making it a priority in the commissioner's office, it's not just attending uh, a, a meeting that's once a month. It has to be a priority where the commissioners would be out in the community, they're meeting individuals. I would like to create a think tank here. I've met with a lot of individuals, young folks uh, especially, who have great ideas, and I'd love to see that happen. That's aligned with the Chamber of Commerce and the Economic Development Corporation. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry Strubinger. Yes, uh, Corbin County's home sweet home to me, and I want to see the future generations be able to stay here, buy the property, fix them up, and, be, and live happily amongst us. To do this, we're going to have to get everyone interested in our economy and try to create some jobs that the people will be able to buy those properties and stay in them. Thank you. Thank you, Rocky Arner. I think I'm coming back to the same thing I said before. Everyone, all the communities, all the municipalities have to get together and work on one plan to bring our county together. You know, and like I said, I'm going back to Lansford Alive or the steering committee from Lehighton. I believe in that, that you're gonna work on your town to bring that donut shop or either that exercise place, and that's what's going to bring the, the economy back and bring jobs. Somebody that, that wants to bring a, 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 a job, uh, say a manufacturing business, they're not going to come here unless they have them things. Thank you. We're going to take a break. We will be right back with the Carbon County Commissioner's debate for closing statements. Don't go away. Support our veterans and watch the Monroe County Veterans Day Parade Sunday, November 3rd at 1 p.m. See local veterans, military equipment, and local organizations perform live and ride in floats to honor our veterans. Watch the Monroe County Veterans Day Parade live on BRC 13 Sunday, November 3rd at 1 p.m. Welcome back to Penn's Peak in beautiful Jim Thorpe and this election special. We're with the Carbon County Commissioner's candidates for 2019. November 5th is election day and as we wrap up, we're going to give each candidate an opportunity to talk to all of you. We'll start with Wayne Notstein. I think we had great conversation tonight among the candidates. We have a lot of great ideas and everything and working with, uh, it's just not the con uh, commissioners, the leaders here, but we need the people sitting here in this room or watching TV tonight. The members of the COG are extremely busy. Everyone is stretched thin now. So it's a delicate balance of trying to get the right people to the table to make things happen. You know, it's going to take a lot of cooperation, coordination, and time. We need the participation of the public, private sectors to make things happen. Thank you. Bob Jacobs. Well, thank you for the opportunity for me to share my thoughts and opinions regarding important issues affecting Carbon County. I appreciate everyone being here and those that are viewing at home. I believe there are two options, two potential options for the uh, November 5th election. The first one is one that um, I personally don't care for, and I think it's not good for Carbon County, and that is that the voters of Carbon County uh, vote for individuals who will continue to just stay the course 
same old, same old way of how decisions are made for Carbon County. That means that we're only going to have minimal, if any, economic growth in the coming years. The second option is some, one that I think is much more favorable, and that is for the voters of Carbon County to really look at candidates who have good strategic planning in their background, who are strong collaborators, who are individuals who can plan well, lead well strategically. I believe I'm part of that second group, and I ask that you consider uh, voting for me in the coming election on November 5th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry Strubinger. Yes, thank you for having us here, for all of us to be able to put our views forward. If you want a commissioner who's gonna attend every meeting and who will be at the, the uh, beck and call of the citizens of Carbon County, I'm approachable. Jobs and payroll are the only one, things that are going to get our economy going again. They're, when the mines had a payroll, and they, the miners didn't make a whole lot of money years ago, but they had a decent-sized payroll. There wasn't any blight in Lansford when I was a young guy. It was a wonderful town. So we have to really concentrate on the economy. Thank you. Thank you. Rocky Arner. Good evening, everyone, again. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming and for this wonderful venue that everybody has set up here. And I wish the best of luck for all the candidates and all the candidates that run throughout Carbon County. I myself, I'm a hands-on person. If you look at what I've done in my background, I always get things done and I always listen to the people what their voices say. Um, I think that's very important because I was one of those people. And I would like to do for you what I thought other candidates should have did for me. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Lukasiewicz. In my hand, I have the symbol, the Green Beret of the U.S. Army Special Forces. It's a symbol of excellence that says more about me than ever I could say about myself. But what it can't say is how much I appreciate the American taxpayer, your investment in me over 34 years. I spoke to that training, that education, that leadership and management experience. I want to apply it here in Carbon County. In lieu of our children saying, I can't wait to get the hell out of here, I want them to say, I can't wait to get back here. So sometime in their life, after going to the military, trade school, college, starting a second career, they return, reinvest, and reinvigorate our community. It's a simple choice you can make on 5 November to help me get there, right? You need to choose between those who have been reactive to someone who's proactive. You need to choose between selfless service or self-interest service. You need to choose between party and politics or progress. And most importantly, you have to choose between followership or what I embody in my spirit, and that's leadership. Thank you so much. Thank you. Gentlemen, I would like to thank you all for joining us tonight. I would like to thank Marlon Kistner, Chris Barrett, and Marta Gouger for being our panelists for the evening. I'd like to thank Penn's Peak for this wonderful venue, and of course, our fabulous BRC TV 13 crew for making this possible. Remember, November 5th is Election Day. It's your right and your duty to vote. Have a great night, everyone. Tonight, on the Live Night Report at 10, the state releases $300 million for firefighter, police, and municipal pension plans. Plus, Dave has our evening weather. Clouds will be moving in, and that will keep the temperatures from dropping down into the 40s. I'll have more tonight at 10 o'clock. Join us for local news, weather, and sports tonight at 10 and 11 on News 13. They say it's cooked to perfection when he decides it is. They say the word flavor was named after him. They say you can beat Bobby Flay. What do they know? Beat Bobby Flay, Thursday night at 10 on Food Network.
to add high definition and get the Food Network in HD. Call 800-CABLE-77. When someone does something unspeakable, you have two choices. You can remain seated or you can stand up. I always stood up. This is the last season of Homicide Hunter for a very simple reason. I decided to end it. I didn't want to be the singer that stayed on the stage after they lost their voice. I want to go out the top of my game. This is it. Homicide Hunter, the final season. All new Wednesday at 9 on ID and ID Go. Welcome to Pocono Landscape Challenge. I'm Connie Roberts. And I'm Jim Skakosa. You know, we got a lot of projects that we've done in the past, mm -hmm. and I thought maybe.